to just making their way into central and southern parts of the Philippines. I still see some shafts there into Indonesia, but not as wet as it has been recently, I'm pleased to say. A similar picture as we well on through Wednesday. Perhaps the shower's a little more widespread by this stage into uh, Laos, into Thailand, and maybe also into similar parts of the Cambodia. We'll see some heavy showers from time to time. And we've got some heavy showers too, making the way to southern parts of Australia. A fair bit of cloud across southern parts of Australia at present. Hello, everybody. The system just over towards that western side of the country. Sorry, I'm a bit late. Let me type the heading. Some heavy rain there, just making its way down towards Perth, and that will continue to ease a little further east, which is we go into the middle part of the week. By then, so what weather to across the eastern side of the country with heavy showers. Let's see. Happy Walkers Day, everybody. She go go. I mean, bring me one hair by freak day. Yeah. How are you doing, guys? You know, to make a deck out this morning fully, you know. Yeah. Liberation generation, everybody. Today is the most special day in world celebration. More important than my birthday. More important than anybody's birthday. More important than Jesus' birthday. More important than Mohammed's birthday. Wait, let me up this my news right here. Sorry, guys, I was listening to the news. I don't. Or rather, the, li li the lies. The fake news. I was listening to the fake news. <laughs> See, more put some, more, let's pour something down for all our ancestors that have died for us to have these freedoms that we have to. That we, that we are using to look for our ultimate freedom. You know, we pour something down for them. To let them know they are not forgotten. To let them know that we are here to carry on their, their struggles. You, you, you understand? Yes. In the traditional way. Yes, so. My people. So yeah, on a day, today is Workers' Day. And whatever we have in this world today is due to the struggles of all the workers, you know, all the working and poor people all over the world. You understand what I'm saying? They will tell us, say, respect the military, support your troops, your troops defend your freedoms. Which day for our life for Nigeria, Nigeria army don't defend our freedom before? We cannot even begin to have those Africans waiting for America or we could just say support our troops. That's American troops who say American troops they defend their freedoms. I go look say people don't be mad, they don't be mad me, they don't be crazy. When in the history of this world, of this new colonial imperialist world that we are living in, not the not our own real world, because before before Africans we lived in our own real world, and our warriors defended us. Our warriors protected us. But these are not the same people. These are not the same people. In this imperialism, since we became conquered by Europeans and Arabs in our own land under their under their thumb of oppression, when as our military fought for anything for us, the job of the military has always been to defend the oppressor. That's why they're no longer called warriors. They are called army, military. They are not warriors. Now warriors will defend their people. We don't have warriors, we have bullies. Bullies with guns and bombs and planes and helicopters and rocket launchers. That's what we got. We don't got no warriors. Warriors fight on the side of truth. Finish. The warrior believe in the truth of his people. The warrior believe in the reality of his people. Warrior, they follow order. Warrior, they follow wisdom. You know they tell you? Warrior, they follow order. Because warrior, they be robot. Warrior, they be zombie. Warrior, follow wisdom. Straight up. When in the history of humanity, in this capitalist system that we live in 
in the beginning of the industrial revolution you know because they don't go tell you now all these facts how we got here in the beginning of the industrial revolution people were kidnapped in in en masse that's in Europe and America and forced into the factory to work. They were working 24 hours a day in some cases. Children! Children forced to work. Child labor. You see the child labor? The end of... For children to be able to go to school in Europe and America, the children of the poor and the working class, they have to die. They have to fight and die against their overlords. Everything happening today, you have to understand the result of struggle. African people ask them what is the meaning of that? Give me two more wages. Give me two more. What does that mean that you come and work for you? Because they keep making us feel that if you don't work for somebody, you can never make it in life. That there's no progress, there's no value. Well, me, I'm 38 years old. So I know that people in this generation are younger than me. Some people in the generation are younger than me, in their 30s, in their 20s. So maybe your grandfathers are younger than my grandfathers. Your grandfathers are my father's generation. So I understand that. But you see anyone in my generation, your grandfather is a homeowner. In the he has the, that in a village house where your grandfather built. Down a house for village. Where well, they always go. Where your grandfather built. Now homeowner now. Everybody grandfather now homeowner. Ask your grandfather who he worked for before he built that house. Who was he working for? Where where he, who be your guy? Where he built the house? Where he gets? Who was his ogre? Africans, they don't understand what it meant to work for someone. Because no matter how you put it, when you work for somebody else, my brother and sister, you are a slave. When you work for somebody else, no matter how you... No, the salary is not compensation enough, say, for your freedom, for your free time. What is slavery? What does slavery mean? People think that slavery means when you are put in chain. When they chain you, you are working in the, you are working in the field. They are here. That's not slavery. Yo. Let me tell you what slavery is. Slavery is slavery is when somebody is in control of your existence. When somebody is in control of your existence. When somebody determines the quality of your existence. When the final authority of your existence lay in the hands of another man. You are a slave to that man, whether you like it or not. Let me repeat, when the final authority of your own existence lays in the hands of another man, whether you like it or not, you are a slave to that man. When another man can decide when you go to bed in your own house, determines when you wake up, determines the free time you have with your family, Determine the free time you have with your children, with your loved ones. When another man determines the quality of food you can eat, the quality of clothes you can afford, my brothers and sisters, you are a slave to that man. It's not until they chain your neck down like a dog that you are a slave. The Oppressors of this world want us to believe that the salary that they pay us is enough compensation for enslaving us, for enslaving our will. Because slavery is that's what slavery is. When somebody is able to control your will, when you cannot bring your will to fruition. Brothers and sisters, we are, we are, we are the liberation generation, and our only task 
must be to question everything that the invaders and the imperialists have come to normalize in our land. Now, what does it mean to be to be to be a successful human being in this system without identifying with the struggles of the working class and poor people of this world? The rich people of this world did not believe that children should go to school. So now back to my story of how they made us start working in Africa. I want you to realize that it's not only Christianity and Islam that use blood to force your people to convert. The capitalists did it even worse. Here in Yoruba land, what the English people used to do was that they would kidnap our children and our wives. They would kidnap our children and our wives and go and lock them in their so-called cells with the help of their uh, army boys, the military, the so-called military, this military that they hate, so these, these bastards. These bastards who that they hate all over the place, military, military, military. They will use them to go and carry our mothers and our children. Lock them up in their cells and in their forts. And say that if our fathers do not walk, they will not release those, those, those people. Our women, our children. In Congo, they went as far as chopping off the hands of people's children to force them to walk. In Congo, to force you to bow to another man in the name of salary. What is salary? What is wage? We have agreed that selling people is wrong. Humanity has agreed that we cannot sell people, Abi. And now, if you now decide to sell your eye, is it okay to sell your eye? Is it okay to sell your nose? Is it okay to sell your hand for money? Is it okay to sell your leg for money? If it is not okay to sell any of this part of your body for money, why do we sell our labor to the rich? Why do we sell our... What part of your body does your labor constitute that is okay for you to sell it to another man? Your labor is a part of you. Your labor is a part of you. We as the workers and working class and poor people of this world, we must reverse the economic system. The people must own the means of production. The people that work it must own it. The people that work the land must own the land. It is the right of every African to own land. That is our number one inalienable right. That's why in the year when people talk, say, oh, do a republic, this, that republic. We have to fight for our tradition when you're not talking about the number one rights established for every African. You know, and walk his land. Now, even the few working class family that are able to have some inherited land are not given the ability to walk that land. They're not given the ability to walk that land and they have to sell it to the rich. They keep accumulating everything. They keep accumulating everything. Look at Honeywell Group. One trillion Naira debt. One fucking trillion. And they say that these people are rich. Why would you be rich? When somebody is willing to give you a trillion of other people's money, other people's money. Now they are coming to fight in newspaper, telling us rubbish. When they've not seen now the government will tell you that they're going to give that one trillion naira back to the bank to protect the money of the depositors to protect the depositors money now please tell me who is the depositor and who is the taxpayer are they different are they different is the taxpayer different from the depositor in the bank This is how they forced us to come under demo, cutting the hands of our children. 
kidnapping our women to make us believe in the concept. Do not tell you that everybody can be rich. Everybody can make it. Every man for himself. Everybody in the pursuit of wealth. But this is the catch-22 that you don't realize. These motherfuckers already own all the wealth. 85% of the world wealth is inherited. 85% of the world's wealth is inherited. So how can you tell me that the hardest worker, the smartest person will make it best in life when all the money in life already is passing down on lineages? How are you going to get the wealth? 85%. I read an article yesterday, the rich in America... The boomers that are old and about to die, the Bill Gates and all these motherfuckers about to die right now, are going to transfer $23 trillion to their children. You say Bill Gates gave all his money to charity. People are stupid, man. People, people are more stupid than I thought. Charity that he owns, his own charity that him and his wife manage, he donates his money to himself. You, are you people crazy? He doesn't want them to tax his children. He doesn't want them to tax his children. That foundation will be paying for flights, paying for houses, paying for all expenses. Tax free. Tax free. Our only chance of surviving. Our only chance of thriving in this nonsense system is to align ourselves with the working class and poor people of the world. Is to align ourselves with the working class and poor people of the world. Does Dangote love Nigeria? As much money as Nigeria has given him, Dangote used all over his factory Indian workers, Chinese workers, while Nigerians are still jobless on the streets. You think one man fighting for it, they say it's only one man, like he's looking, profit is the only incentive. Pro Yes, profit is a good incentive. Profit is a good incentive for greed. Greed. And no matter what they tell you in uh, Wall Street films, greed is not good. Your body saw until you die, die. How can you tell them that to be greedy is a good behavior? What kind of rubbish system are we living in? What kind of rubbish system are we living in telling us that to be greedy? It's a good behavior. It's, it's a good sign. Go to all their companies, all the all their all the people in the management pool. Go to all the oil company. Now you both food here. They do all the good jobs. They collect five times the salary of the African people doing the same job. We must, we must, African people, let me tell you, eh, our, our duty is not, not be only to, to free ourselves from, from oppression, from domination. Our duty is to also show the world a new way. To show the world a new way. A new way. Everything Oibo people, westernization, Arabization, has told you as fact. Is nothing but epistemology. Is nothing but epistemology. And you, as African people, you have the right to question it. Not only question it, you have the right to replace it. You have the right to replace it. What are we doing? This is a clarion call. You know, I never begin yard when I say people don't they willingly just go come flood our MOP telegram, our page, never get ten thousand followers for MOP center. I know the Yabuna. Because we got some of our resources never ready. We just the finalized constitution manifesto now. Well, it's going through the final reading among all the members now. We'll do the meeting this Sunday. So all MOP members reading for this uh, live now. I'm gonna mark Sunday down and don't forget to we'll soon put up a group. Sunday, we are discussing the constitution, the manifesto, our mission, vision, everything before we put it out in public. You understand? But once that come outside, 
Once that come outside, please, I want you all to engage. You must engage. You must engage. And even if you are not engaging in what I'm doing, engage in your own way. You know, Workers' Day represents everything that is great about humanity. You see, this world, all working class and poor people fight for every right what we get today. When Martin Luther King they fight for America, how many American army people they fight for? Fight with them? They were shooting him. When fella they fight for Nigeria, not be our army, they go fight them. Um, people who want to join MOP, please um, go to MOP Center on Instagram. MOP Center, you, you know, uh, Center spelled C E N T R E properly, not be center of uh, something, it will be E R, now center, so R E, M O P C E N T R E. You see, Olodo, the photo green, not be center like this, so center, R E, not E R. Ah. Oh, you see, it doesn't our language they speak now. No, we get all this problem. Eh? Oh, by MOP. Eh, well, oh, by MOP. La, la, okay. OGBA. Yala, ya. Oh, she, Mr. Medusa. Eh, MOP Center. That's the spelling. Please, go to our page. DM. DM the page and we'll put you, put you on the telegram and you get your form. You know, we're going to get you on the website where we can, you know, put all the... Uh, ah, photo green. You, have, you see, the, you correct yourself. That's it. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Some people never agree. Like this rape matter, where they happen now, where they say one baba is Jesha, they rape somebody. You see, people are coming out to say that they should go and arrest the people that use the girl for the sting operation. They are bringing out stupid excuse. One actor, you miss something. I don't know anything. One idiot bastard. I say, can't go say I for. I know they celebrate me for Nigeria. Thank God, I'm a celebrity for Nigeria. You understand? Thank God, say because to see me, they they know all these people. See, I be I know them. That Mr. Ayi, I don't go. I don't go pick this money for your ass now. I go say they leave the girl with rapists. They were watching on video. She was not alone. She was not alone. Mugu. They were watching on video. She was not alone. Is there no film that bastard now? Now I go see comments and talk. Say where is the evidence? When I don't bring all those kind, I say, now nah, I nah, know when our friends them, we no fist slap slap on our face. This is what I'm telling you people that it is these same people that say they are fighting against rape, that are encouraging rape culture. Why Nigerian actors never go meet that motherfucker for a house? Let me give her some slaps. Imagine all these fuckers, man, there's one age of all these idiots. Out here talking about the Jugwa arrest princess. The Jugwa arrest princess for doing one of the most noble acts that I've seen in this country. The Jugwa arrest princess. Imagine these fucking bastards. Imagine these people. Imagine these people. Because they are pedophiles as well. When you see this kind of action, you understand that these men don't want this, they want to scare anybody from coming out because they know the skeletons in their cupboard, that their own victims too might become empowered to come out. And that's why I said in my last decision that Nigeria actresses should come out. Fuck these guys, expose them. But no, we want to protect rape culture, but arrest rapists. You cannot protect rape culture. And attack rapists. It will never end. It will not becoming worse. It will be becoming worse. This is what will happen. You now catch a rapist. They will say they come and catch the person that caught the rapist. A pedophile. This is even worse than a rapist. A pedophile. A fucking pedophile, fam. That desperate idiot. Self, they come as I can't talk. Desperate idiot. See the talk for this Nigeria. Desperate idiot. See the talk for this Nigeria. See, this is the kind of country we live in. Nigerian actresses must all come out and expose these things once and for all. 
This is a new world. Don't be ashamed. Now you don't become big woman now. You are afraid to. I understand. Trust me how difficult it is for you to talk about your trauma. But only your trauma now can save this country from this plague. See it that way, my people. My women, see it that way. Understand it that way. Many of you are rich enough to open a website where you can anonymously expose these people. Then leave the rest to the people of this country. Expose them. Expose these people. Fuck these motherfuckers, man. Talk to him, they go arrest princess. You know, and they scared the, they're scaring the girl. I see the girl lawyer having to write a letter. Princess Maria is having to write a letter to say, eh, eh, my client doesn't know anything about the video leakage. This imagine how they are putting pressure on somebody that has done something righteous. Vector called me yesterday saying, Go see Princess for her. Say, she tells they call her for phone and they threaten her life. They call her for phone and they're threatening her life. These are the motherfuckers you people celebrate in this country. These are the people you people put in positions of influence. They are pedophile ring, calling people and threatening their lives for saying the truth. Because they make you laugh. They make you laugh at your culture on TV. Make you laugh at your history. They reinforce your love of Jesus Christ. I is coming to save you. Making jokes about your oppression. Making jokes, you celebrate them. Monsters. Me, I don't send anybody. Don't have fire all of them. One guy for radio tell me, say, eh, one thing where we're there for a drink, I can't tell her something. He said, ah, now this is my behavior. Then they make people like me. I said, if you don't like me on the radio of Nigeria, I say radio. What is the worst you can do? You will not not play my music. No, what are you going to do to me? You will not not play my music more, or you will you will not play my music some more. I mean, I don't understand. What can they, see? They cannot do not that to me. And you know what they can come out and tell me tomorrow and say, she will bring three people to my office to look for contracts. That's why Shewu is talking. Nobody can say Shewu say I should borrow him money. I didn't borrow him. That's why turn the fire of the father. I rather eat. I rather eat dead sand. I rather eat sand. Eh, sand. I just. I rather eat sand than to than to care about you people's feelings and emotions. You you masters of Nigeria. All I need to do is come outside in my balcony every day and see what you influence, see what you inspire. See what you encourage and not I spit on your grave. I spit on your grave in your death. So in your real life, how can I, Shewa Nikola Bukuti, look at you with any kind of reverence? I begin buying bad you to buy Shenya. Be mad. They are calling princess and threatening her. What are you fuckers doing? Because I don't think people that are calling her to threaten her are far from the people that are coming out on Instagram to say police should arrest her. They are not far from each other. They are not far from each other. Nigerian actresses expose these people. Don't be afraid. They can't do you anything. They can't do you anything. This is how bullies behave. They are pissing their pants. They can't sleep right now. They are afraid. They are afraid that an actress as big as Princess has come out to this kind of bomb. What else will other people come out to say now? What else will other people come out to say now? That's what is making them afraid. Fucking expose them. Expose them. 
Everybody will come outside, be doing anyhow. Anyway, I'm sorry I, I digress, but that's important to let you people know. But moving on, moving on, back to Workers' Day. Back to Workers' Day, we the people of this country, we support the worker. we the people of MOP, we're in solidarity with the workers of this country. But at the same time, we understand that the workers of this country also need reorientation. We understand that the workers of this country also need to understand that they also need to align with the people of this country. The poor workers of this country make up the majority of people of this country. You understand? So I understand the pressure of the high professionals of this country. The people that do the sophisticated jobs that lead to our oppression. Mm -hmm. The people that do the bloody big, big grammar that lead to our oppression. So, ladies and gentlemen, please, 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 and please, let us now begin to align ourselves with the people, align ourselves with our destiny, with our own destiny. What is wealth if I cannot have peace of mind? What is wealth if I cannot have peace of mind? We must begin to dream of a nation where nobody is making wealth to the detriment of his brother and sister. Those things that we need in life to, be, to live in dignity, those things you need in life to, conf to affirm your humanity must not be the way somebody else makes money. We must dream of a nation where the health, the health care, which is the life of your brother and sister, is not where you go and mount gates to become billionaire. Where the food that your people will eat is not where you go and mount gates to become billionaire. That the fuel that your people need to power their existence, their mobility, to look for opportunities in life is you not know where you go at Mount Gates to become billionaire. That those things that we need for our housing is you not know where you go at Mount Gates to become billionaire. And in fact, Africans must begin to think brick instead of cement. There is mud everywhere in Africa. All we have to do is bake the mud. The way our ancestors have built houses for generations. Mud is more durable than cement. Why Nigerian government has not embarked, abandoned Nangote with his year expensive cement, and do brick, mud brick buildings for people to live in in this country still baffles me. But you cannot mount gate there, Sha. This is not where we are going to in this country. That the education. The ability of the people to accumulate knowledge for themselves, to become intelligent, to become their best selves, is not where you will go and mount gates for your existence. And to the university lecturers and vice chancellors, let me explain to you, let me explain to you today that the grades the grades in our university are the most precious resources in this country. The marks, those marks you give are not yours to give. Those marks you give signify that the whole society, that the whole society is endorsing that student with that capacity. It is not just you. So our university lecturers must understand that even worse than the looting of our financial and monetary and material commonwealth is the way the lecturers in Nigeria loot grades for their own personal benefit. Our grades are our nation's most precious resource. And you as lecturers are put in charge but you use it 
just like politicians to rape to steal to oppress hmm hmm on this workers day we appeal to you to understand on behalf of the young people of this country that those grades are not yours to give that those grades are a representation of what the society expects of that young person. And that whatever is going on in the mindset in the psyche of Nigerian people stems from your abuse of that power. Thank you very much, everybody, today for joining this live. You understand? We as African people must understand that today, the Workers' Day, is our day as African people. It's our day to reaffirm that our destiny is not to be slaves to the masters of this universe. Our destiny is not to search for seats at the table where they are dividing our people up for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Our duty is to storm that room where the table is and upturn that table. Our duty is to destroy that table. Our duty is to burn, make sure that that table no longer exists, to eliminate it. Because there is no table big enough for all African people. Whether we like it or not, if we accept the table theory, it means we are willing to exclude the majority of African people. There is no table with over 2 billion seats. Thank you very much.